Devontae Adams, I'm going to tell you one thing, and that is do not play with us because we ain't on that type of time, man. We, we, we ain't trying to have you troll us, us Ravens fans. We are very, very emotional, and you are causing us a lot of distress right now, a lot of excitement. But a lot of distress right now because we've seen this time and time again where just yesterday it was mentioned that us, the Baltimore Ravens, and a few other teams have either been interested in Devontae Adams or Devontae Adams has been interested in us. So for him to do this amongst that, especially how this really singles us out amongst all the other teams that were mentioned in that article too. Let's just look at it. Devontae Adams on his Instagram story today, he posted this picture of Edgar Allan Poe. And we know that he obviously has ties to Baltimore. That's where he's known to be from. We know that. And then, of course, that's where the Baltimore Ravens, where they quote the Raven. Y'all know the whole story already. But then the next thing that he posted, it was a quote from Edgar Allan Poe. And he said, believe nothing you hear and have of what you see. Devontae Adams, man. If you if you on the way, man, just just let us know, man, because I, 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 I ain't trying to go through this, man. I, I'm really not. I'm really not. We really not because we don't been through enough as Ravens fans. And to 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 just make it to, to feel like we're in this thing, like the beginning of this, uh, this week, I ain't necessarily shut it down. But I was like, oh, it probably ain't happening. It probably ain't going to go down. And then there was that video that Sarah Ellison, shout out to Sarah Ellison, where she brought up. Where Devontae Adams was talking about, oh, I, I, if I had to choose between getting a bunch of yards, playing for a team where I get a bunch of yards versus uh, going to a team where I maybe get like eight or 900 yards, maybe 10 touchdowns, uh, but I get a chance to play with a Lamar Jackson and get a Super Bowl, then I would take that. And that was from January 20th of this year. And I was like, oh, that gave us some hope. But at the same time, I was like, nah, let's still chill. Let's still relax. But then yesterday, the article comes out, well, Devontae Adams, he got his teams that he, of course, favors that being the Jets, number one, then they're the Saints. Then there was the, some other teams listed that have either contacted him or he's, try, or he's interested in playing for them. And it was the, the, the Jets and the, the, the Steelers, the 49ers, the Bills, uh, but the Baltimore Ravens were on that list. It's like, oh, hold up. Why are we getting a little bit more hope every single day? Every single day we get a little bit more hope. And then he goes and does this. He goes and posts this. Like, come, come on now, man. What, what are we doing? What are we doing? So is Devontae Adams, is he on the way to the ball? I don't know, man. Now, if he is, y'all know I would be all for it. We've we been talking, and uh, we, like, y'all know. Y'all know how I feel about it. Y'all know what I'm on. It would be the best, the best wide receiver that Lamar Jackson has ever had in his entire career. Devontae Adams is somebody that's like that. Devontae Adams, we already done went through all of this. And I thought yesterday, I thought yesterday was going to be our last day talking about it, but he goes and does this. Devontae Adams, you coming through or not? Please, please just don't play the game. Eric DaCosta, may, maybe y'all negotiating and he's trying to see like, hey, what, what is going to be? Eric DaCosta, like, look. I know you ain't going to send no second round pick for I, I get that. I know if if you do trade for him, it's probably going to be like a third and a fifth. Eric DaCosta, if it takes a little extra six to get it done, just do it. Just do it. If it takes an extra seven to get just do it. Get it done. We know as far as the money and everything, we know the money's going to be an obstacle. It's going to be tough to get over that, get through that, get past that. But you can. You got you, you got plenty of experience, you got people on your side, Pat Moriarty, who can get through all the logistics and all the salary cap stuff. Call up Brian McFarlane if you need to as well. If we need to start a little GoFundMe where we all pitch in a dollar and try to help out, we'll do that. But Eric DaCosta, come on, man. Come on, man. Don't, don't let, even if Devontae Adams is toying with us, even if he is messing with us, you be the best troll. If Devontae Adams is like, oh, I'm just trolling all them Ravens fans, I ain't going there. Make the Raiders, take him from the Raiders. Take him from the Raiders. Make that be his punishment for trolling us. Eric DaCosta, make this go down, man. Help, help this happen because this would do so much for the ball. Like, think about this. Think, think, think about this real quick, yo. Imagine the Baltimore Ravens. Imagine if they had, like, the best running game in the league imagine if they had that oh they do oh okay cool you ain't gotta imagine it but imagine pairing lamar jackson derrick henry pat ricard 
the offensive line, the run, they, they killing it in the run game, right? Killing it, literally killing it, destroying everything in their way right now in the run game. So they, they finding their footing, like literally. Imagine pairing that with Jose Flowers, who you know that, that boy could play. When his number's called on, that he could play. Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, Rashad Bateman. And you throw Devontae Adams in the mix with that? Like, look, and, and uh, like we always say, he wouldn't be coming here to get no 12, 1,300, 1,400, 1,500. No, that ain't the kind of offense that this is. But we would have a receiver who, when it's time, oh, he can make some stuff happen. When it's time, oh, he'll be ready for the call. And when it's time, Devontae Adams is going to come through. EDC, make it happen. Please. Now, Team Keep It Clean, before we continue, I got to say, I love y'all. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Make sure you tell somebody you love them. And let's do a, a better job of spreading a lot more love uh, amongst each other. So, because it just, it can go such a long, long, long way. I appreciate y'all so much. I appreciate y'all positivity. I appreciate y'all support. Thank you for everything that y'all do. Seriously, I, I really, 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 really appreciate it a lot. Now, um, one way that we try to show that appreciation is by featuring your questions in these videos. If you would like to be part of that, if you're a Team Keep It Clean patron, and if you're not one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz. But if you are one, just send your question directly on Patreon. Or if you're not, you can send it to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com. Let's get into it. First question came from my guy, Nova. He said, expect the worst, hope for the best. Hey, Engraven. It's Nova here again with more opinions that I like your take on. As always, I hope you and the fam are doing well and the rest of Team Keep It Clean is doing the same. With this Adams news, I got some takes and will love your opinion as well as a question about Derrick Henry. Disclaimer, it's another novel, but here we go. All right, let me get comfortable real quick. All right, I'm ready. He said, so best case scenario for Baltimore is we actually get Adams and give up a second, maybe a fourth. We also get him to restructure so this year's cap hit isn't fatal, and we re-sign him to a team-friendly deal so he can finish his career as a Baltimore Raven after we all get the ring we've been hungry for. Wouldn't be mad at that at all. Uh, he said, now, uh, now that I've addressed the part of make-believe, getting Adams not that ring because we got to get it this year. Let's be practical. Let's be practical. Hold up, man. Hey. Uh, oh, by the way, he sent this before the whole Devontae Adams Instagram story, but let's continue. He said, uh, out of the eight teams floated as possibilities, I do not think the Ravens would give up the capital necessary to outbid these other teams. N New Orleans is broke. Las Vegas wouldn't trade the Kansas City nor the L.A. Chargers because that's in the division. Uh, Dallas wouldn't since they got to pay Micah. Detroit is enjoying the breakout season of Jamison Williams, so they need the need for him isn't there based off of the price of draft capital. But just out of a deal with talented but disgruntled wide receivers and they want the cap flexibility to strengthen their defense. Shout out to the flock for exposing that, by the way, which realistically leaves the Jets and Commanders. I guess I could throw uh, Pittsburgh in this as well, but I can't see them trading for a wide receiver. That's Devontae's age and giving up picks they could use to fortify the offensive line. Good point. But he did say if the Commanders made the move, it would be... It wouldn't be until they sat around 6-2, and two, second loss by our hands, and had a grip on their division, so they may miss out, which it seems they're okay with, so it leaves the Jets as the clear runner for his services. Unlike other contenders, they have to go all in for their jobs or the front office, and it's Aaron's guy who is the proxy GM. Now, the organization never seems to think of tomorrow unlike other stable organizations and would gladly give up the capital if it gives them a shot of being employed in 2025. That gives them uh, Adams, Wilson, Adams, Wilson, Lazard, and Williams as their wide receiver core uh, this leads me to my first belief and i ask you what do you think of us going after wilson after this trade happens oh garrett wilson wow that would be something um he's too young for the ravens <laughs> straight up man he's, he's he's too young for the ravens uh, he also said hit me out before you dismiss this as a never happening if you watch their games it's clear him and aaron are not on the same page aaron is also uh, a personality and like tom in tampa bay would rather work with vets instead of younger talent Oh, yeah, especially his guy. You know, Aaron, like, he, he love putting on for his guys, man. If Aaron goes anywhere, his guys will follow. Anyway, he said, um, the Jets also have to pay him and Saul soon, so those extensions are looming. And I don't know if the Jets will want to pay both guys top dollar with their respective markets, but it's cheaper to pay Sauce than it is Gary Wilson. Lastly, with the fifth-year option available, I can see Baltimore being a lot more interested in him and the ability to create his contract rather than dealing with an inflated contract already. And even the fifth-year option would be more palpable than what Adams would require. Your thoughts. That, the way that you broke it down is perfect especially when you talk about that fifth year option and them being able to create the contract instead of inheriting a created contract but yeah he, he's too young for the ravens ravens don't go after young wide receivers like that that ain't that ain't what they do seriously i'm joking but it's serious at the same time it's just not them gary wilson would be nice but 
I don't think Ravens are doing that. Uh, he said also, so next up, I have to say what I think Baltimore will do and what I think could be a happy medium. Knowing our front office, we won't go after Adams, as I stated before. We wouldn't go after Cooper because of division. We wouldn't go after Hopkins because Tennessee still sees us as rivals, and you got to think they would be sour with how well Derrick Henry looks for us. We wouldn't pay for Tyreek because that's even worse of a deal on the cap. So with all that being said, I think our organization, what our organization does is go sign Michael Thomas because he can come in for the low, and we wouldn't need him to be the guy. And it's been a type of low-risk, high-reward deals we've seen in the past. What say you? You know what? I, I'm surprised that the Ravens didn't even bring him in for a visit this offseason. Uh, Michael Thomas has dealt with a lot of injuries over the years. and But Ravens are a team that even if somebody dealt with a lot of injuries, if they're available, they'll take a look. They'll bring you in for a visit. Just see how you are and what. Now, I am very surprised that they didn't bring him in. Um, what could he do at this point in his career? Depending on how healthy he was. Uh, I feel like he would be, when he was healthy, he'd be a perfect receiver. Uh, for what the Baltimore Ravens do. He could help get that the short passing game. He could help keep it going. He wouldn't have to come in and be the number one receiver, anything like that. I'd much rather Devontae Adams, of course, but Michael, a healthy Michael Thomas could help out a lot, especially over the middle of the field. Uh, he also said, last question, with the success we've had with the last two weeks with Derrick Henry, and if he can remain fresh and effective for the rest of the season, do you see us resigning him after this year? We all know his two-year deal is realistically a one-year deal with a second year as an, the second as an option, and if this is... Who we're getting, I can't imagine us letting someone as vital of, as him walk after year one. Thanks for all you do, and best wishes for you and the fam and the channel. Appreciate that, Nova. Yeah, I, I think with Derrick Henry, everything just depends on how the rest of the season plays out. But like you said, if he continues this, I do think the Ravens will find a way uh, to keep Derrick Henry because he obviously fits in very well with the Baltimore Ravens, even with their community, even, even all the off-the-field stuff. He fits in very well with the Baltimore Ravens. They, like, they love Derrick Henry. Obviously, the production on the field, but everything off the field as well. So I think, yeah, if he continued doing what he's been doing, then, yeah, I think they will keep him for sure. Next question came from my guy, Keontae. He said, yo, Engraven, remember the praise Adam gave Lamar Jackson and, and during Raiders week? I mean, super team in the making, huh? But while that big splash would be great, I think I'd rather Amari Cooper. Cost less, uh, can give you the same production, and it's coming from a run-heavy team, so he knows a thing or two about taking a back seat to the run game. Browns ain't doing that. The only way the Browns would trade Amari Cooper to the Baltimore Ravens if Baltimore Ravens gave up everything for Amari Cooper. They would not trade him to the Baltimore in division trade. While the Browns have been struggling and the Baltimore Ravens have been on the come up, I, I just don't see that happening. Anyway, he said, I also think Amari is a little less selfish and would help the young guys grow more. Not saying Adams is super selfish, but I feel like he is worried about himself right now. What are your thoughts? Oh, you got to watch the video from yesterday. Well, no, two days ago, excuse me, two days ago, where we posted the clip of Devontae Adams talking about that thing right there that you're you saying that he's selfish. Everything that he said in that clip was the exact opposite of selfish. Uh, he also said, um, I always do this, but we also uh, need to go and talk to the Patriots about Joe Milton because that guy is a stud and will be a great backup or future replacement if need be. You already think about the replacement for Lamar Jackson? Next question came from my guy, Jarvo. He said, Coach answered a question from his subscriber about Todd Munkin's weakness as a play caller, and his answer was he thinks Munkin's weakness as a play caller is him, <laughs> is him listening to John Hobo. Uh, Coach also said, the, well, let's start with that first. I, that, I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I couldn't say. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I, I don't know. He said, Coach also said he thinks the reason Roquan is not playing like he did last year is because he thinks Roquan is too busy teaching uh, Trent Simpson where to be on defense, and he didn't have to do that with PQ because PQ already knew the spots on defense. What are your thoughts on these? Oh, that is interesting because um, th that, that's why you got to have people like Coach, man. I, I did not think about that at all. Um, because, yeah, Patrick Queen was in, what was last year? Was that, last year was his what, fourth year? When Patrick Queen was 2020, first round pick, I think, I think it's 2020. So 2020, 2021, 2022, 2023. Uh, so, yeah, he was in his fourth year last year. So he had a, a, a big understanding of the defense and everything. Him and Roquan Smith had already worked together. So they had that chemistry too. Uh, but with Trent Simpson, this is his first year starting. Uh, well, first year being out there as much. He's not necessarily a starter, but you get what I'm saying. He's a starter or whatever. But um, this is his first year being out there as much as he is. So that there's going to be a learning curve. There's going to be a learning process. So that could be a big part of it. That's, I like that. I, I didn't think about that either. Uh, he also said, do you think we need to start working on contract extensions now before the prices get too high? For example, Isaiah Likely, Super Duper Kyle, and Tyler Linda Flinder. Um, yeah, like the, the, the sooner you get those guys signed, the better for the Ravens, because yes, all three of those guys' prices are only going to go way 